okay good evening everyone good evening everyone so uh i'm very happy today because i can like uh share something uh with all of you today with another two experts in this field so without any delay i'm going to talk about the topic now i'm going to share the screen now yeah yep can you see it okay perfect okay so the, to the topic I'm talking today is about cancer and also female fertility. Of course, I'm talking about this topic because I'm the female fertility specialist in uh, Thompson Hospital. So this is a very special topic because um, for a very long time, we haven't got this chance to talk about this thing. Okay, until today, we have another few experts. So we can discuss this topic together and uh, let us go to the second slide. Okay, the first thing we need to discuss, we need to share with all of you today is how cancer and cancer treatments can actually affect female fertility. Okay, so female fertility is something very important for any female cancer uh, uh, patient because I think, I believe all cancer patients before, before they see the doctor or before any cancer treatment being started, I think the uh, issue of fertility should be discussed beforehand and, and they should know how is their fertility potential, okay? So first thing first, we need to know how cancer treatment actually can affect female fertility, okay? Of course, for any cancer treatment, part of the, ma the major part of the treatment is actually surgery, okay? So for female cancer, so the main treatment is actually hysterectomy, meaning removal of the uterus. So the, without the uterus, the ladies cannot get pregnant, the woman cannot get pregnant. And also for the cancer of the ovary, the doctor might do an ophrectomy, a bilateral ophrectomy, meaning removal of both ovary. So after removing the ovaries, so there's no eggs or no oocyte left in the female body. So there's no chance to get uh, any ovulation or any chance of pregnancy. So the third operation is trachelectomy. Trachelectomy meaning it's the removal of the female cervix. Okay, so everyone knows that actually the cervix is the door guarding the uterus. So without the cervix, so the woman will, will have what we call a recurrent miscarriage or even very severe preterm labor. So these ladies, this woman, this uh, cancer survivor will have difficulty carrying the baby. Okay, so the second thing affecting the female fertility is the radiotherapy. Depending on what cancer and also what is the stage of the cancer? So sometimes radiotherapy is, un, is unavoidable. So when they have radiotherapy, especially the radiation to the pelvic area, okay, so the radiation could damage the ovary. So when the ovary is damaged, so it will affect the ovulation and also the fertility. And another important issue is the radiation to the brain. A lot of people think, you know, the female fertility all confined to the pelvic area. Actually, it's not correct because Actually, the female hormone and the reproductive hormone is actually controlled by the brain, particularly the pituitary, uh, the pituitary gland. So if the radiation to the brain damage the pituitary gland, so the, the, the normal hormonal cycle and also the, the, the fertility potential will be affected. Okay, so the third treatment affecting the female fertility is the chemotherapy. So the chemotherapy will actually stop the cancer cell from growing. At the same time, it could damage the ovary. Any fast growing tissue in the body is being affected, in uh, particular for women, is the ovary and also the oocyte production is being affected. Number four is a hormone therapy. We know that actually for a normal pregnancy to happen, a woman need a normal ovulatory cycle and also normal hormone, okay, for this pregnancy to happen. If this women being treated with hormone therapy, all this normal ovulatory hormone and also pregnancy hormone will be disrupted, okay? So it will affect the chances of getting a baby. Number five is a targeted therapy and immunotherapy. Same thing, this targeted therapy and immunotherapy might disrupt the hormone, the female hormone. Number six is a bone marrow and stem cell therapy, okay? Because bone marrow and stem cell therapy women will require high dose of medication such as steroid and also uh, what they call uh, the immunosuppressant medicine, the medication. So it will also affect the uh, ovulation and the chances of pregnancy. Okay, so this is what I mentioned just now. So these are all the, all the hormonal uh, 
effect the hormone in require for a woman to get pregnant in this body. So actually the female hormone is actually controlled by the brain. Okay, so controlled by the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the pituitary will release the FSH and LH, and the FSH and LH will affect the ovary, ovulation, and will affect the uh, menstrual cycle. Okay, so if any chemotherapy or radiotherapy affecting this area, so the chances of fertility will be affected. Okay, so not all women undergo chemotherapy or radiotherapy definitely will be infertile. Some women or majority of the women they still can have natural pregnancy after the uh, cancer treatment, okay? So there's still possible natural pregnancy after cancer treatment, but th these are the few points that they need to understand and they need to know beforehand. Okay, number one, so the recommended waiting period after the cancer treatment or after the cancer recovery should be about six months to two years, okay? Why six months to two years long? Because six months, is to reduce the risk of birth defect from the chemotherapy. Okay, so we will ask the woman to wait for six months before they embark on the journey of getting pregnant. Two years, meaning why we need to wait for two years? Because in some advanced cancer or some uh, severe cancer treatment, the cancer recurrence will be highest in the first two years. So we will advise the ladies to wait for another two years, to wait for two years before starting to have baby. Okay, this is the first point. The second point that they need to understand is after the cancer treatment, especially chemotherapy or radiotherapy to the ovary, menopause may start five to 20 years earlier. Okay, meaning they will, they, they, the, the period will stop like 10 years, 20 years earlier. I mean, this is, this is, this is a, 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 what you call is a difficulty for those ladies who started family late. Let's say they, they already, you know, they already achieved menopause at the age of 40. Then, then, then the, the fertility window will be short, okay? So I will explain more on the shortened fertility window, okay, on the next slide. Okay, so everyone can see here, the normal woman fertility window is from 20 to 50, okay? Of course, after 20 years old, if they, if they got married earlier, so the fertility, win fertility window will start earlier, okay? So these are the normal fertility window. These are the... This is the fertility window for women with, with cancer treatment. You see, I mentioned just now, so after the cancer treatment, they need to wait for six months to two years. So these are the waiting period. And then after that, they will start for, they will start trying to get pregnant in this fertility window. But this window becomes shorter because this lady would have early menopause, meaning they have menopause 10 years earlier. Okay, so you see, this is the actual fertility window for cancer survivor, for female cancer patient. Okay, so because of this shortened fertility window, that tends to have difficulty getting baby after the treatment. Okay, so how can we help them? How can we, as a fertility specialist, or how can we, as a whole fertility center, to help to help this patient with a cancer issue? Okay, so. The first service we provide here is, of course, cryopreservation. Cryopreservation meaning we preserve the eggs or the embryo, okay, before the cancer treatment being started, okay? So we know that the cancer treatment, especially the chemotherapy, radiotherapy, might damage the embryo or might damage the, the ovary. So we preserve the eggs, you know, when the, when the patient is still healthy, before the chemotherapy, we preserve the egg for future use. This is the first thing we can offer. Number two, we can actually preserve the embryo, okay, during the optimal fertility window. Meaning, meaning, meaning sometimes they already finished the chemotherapy or radiotherapy, but they're yet to have planning to get baby. So in this time, because we know that the fertility window is short, so we offer them the service to keep the eggs first before they, they got married. Okay, so we can actually preserve the egg during the optimal fertility window. Okay, so what are the options we can actually, what are the options we provide here in our fertility center? Okay, so we can preserve the egg. We call it egg freezing. Egg is meaning the, the ovum from the, from the ovary, okay, or the oocyte from the ovary. We can actually freeze the egg for future use. Okay, we can actually freeze the embryo. Okay, if the, if the woman is already married and uh, 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 they, are, they are planning to have kids, okay, so we can actually preserve the embryo first, 
okay, then we transfer back the embryo after the cancer treatment. Okay, so they can get pregnant after the cancer treatment. And this is ovarian tissue freezing. This is still in the um, early stage of this, uh, of this freezing uh, procedure, but uh, a lot of centers start doing this ovarian tissue freezing, meaning we freeze the ovarian tissue, and then after that, we transplant the ovarian tissue into the woman's body. Okay, these are the short, you know, short picture or short uh, process of how we do the cryopreservation. Okay, first step is, of course, we stimulate the ovary to produce more eggs, okay, by putting injection. So the woman will have like, do the injection for about 10 days to 12 days to stimulate the ovary to produce more eggs. And then we have to do the follicle tracking. We do ultrasound scan to see how many eggs is actually produced. And also we need to see the size of the eggs. And then at the perfect timing, we will have to do the egg retrieval. Okay, so if we opt for an egg freezing, we are going to freeze after we retrieve the eggs. These are, these, these are the eggs, okay? How it look like under the microscope. So we will actually retrieve the eggs, we freeze the egg and we keep. This is normally for a uh, single lady or the woman they yet to have, you know, they have planning to have kids. So we freeze the egg first, okay? If they prefer to freeze the embryo, we will, pro we will pro proceed to fertilization meaning we will get the sperm from the, uh, the partner and then we fertilize in the lab and we culture the embryos, okay? When the embryos form, so we will freeze the embryos, okay? This is the deified embryos. We will freeze the embryos for future use, okay? So this, these are the five steps that we use for the cryopreservation. Okay, what if, what if all these ladies before the treatment or after the treatment, you know, before the treatment, they have no intention to freeze their egg or they have no intention to freeze, to freeze the embryo. But now after the treatment, they want to start the family. But because they already crossed the fertility window or because of, of all the treatment, the eggs or the ovary already being damaged. So now they have no frozen uh, baby, they have no frozen embryos, they have no frozen eggs. So what, what can we do for them? What can we offer them? Okay, of course, number one is egg donation. Okay, so egg donation meaning that this woman can actually get the eggs from donor, from someone, so from someone else. Okay, so egg donation can be from anonymous donor and can be from known donor. Okay, so this is the first option. The second option is embryo donation. Embryo donation meaning the embryo actually donated by someone else. And now this woman, they get the embryo from the donor and put it into their own body. Okay, so they can offer embryo donation. Third one is surrogacy. Surrogacy is not being offered in Malaysia, but it actually being done in other, other country. Okay, it is for patient who has lost their womb. Lost, lost their uterus. So they have to use surrogacy uh, in, in order to achieve a pregnancy. Okay, number four, of course, is adoption. Number five is maybe they just adopt a child free living after the cancer treatment. Okay, these are all the options for all the cancer, the, the, the woman, the cancer woman survival that actually they want to start a family after the cancer treatment. Okay, so this is my last slide. Okay, so these are the take home message, you know, for all of us and all, all the ladies out there. The discussion about preserving the fertility must be done. The discussion must be done now with fertility specialists and oncologists before the cancer treatment being started. Okay, of course, we all understand that cancer treatment is a very depressing and a very, uh, 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 how to say, a very severe, you know, very uh, sad decision, okay, to make, to do this. But don't forget, we as a doctor, we need to remind them about their fertility and we need to talk to them about the fertility will or the, the wish, you know, to get a baby after the treatment. So this should be done before any treatment, okay, before any fertility treatment, okay. Second thing is, women, all women need, all women needs to know the risks and the chances of success of each method that I discussed just now, okay? They need to know what are the chances. They need to come to us so that we can discuss which 
which cryopreservation is actually the best for them. Okay, number three, they need to understand that actually no method works 100% of the time. Okay, we offer the best method to each person. Okay, but they need to know there's no method works 100% of the time, but uh, we, have to, we have to give them the reality and the successful chance of each treatment. Okay, these are the take home message I need to, you know, to show to all of you. So if you have any question, okay, you can ask me or you can ask after the end of all this uh, presentation. Thanks for the wonderful okay. sharing, Dr. Y. Yeah. The fertility timeline window, like it really makes it easier to understand um, yes. on, yeah, the factors uh, revolving when it comes to fertility. We have some questions, but your take home message pretty much like um, answer it. Yeah. So, um, but are you ready uh, anyway? So basically the question is like, um, how treatment could affect my fertility? And yeah, maybe we'll stop at there. So how would you, um, what would you say Dr. Y? How treatment could affect my fertility? You mean the cancer treatment? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think um, we already discussed this uh, at the beginning of this slide. Actually the cancer treatment, depending on what cancer treatment, some cancer, some cancer treatment require surgery, you know, but not all surgery actually affect the, the female reproductive organ. Okay, what I discussed from the beginning is actually the surgery that removes the female reproductive organ. So that will actually affect the fertility potential, depending on what the woman wants. You see this, if, if the cancer is a, is a uterus, uterine cancer, meaning this woman had to remove the womb. Okay, if the woman had to remove the womb, then the treatment will be different because because even if this woman have the ovary or have the eggs, we can preserve the eggs, but she actually need, you know, she needs a womb to carry the baby. Okay. So this is also something that we need to discuss. That's why we should sit down the, the fertility specialist and also the oncologist with like, Dr. Tan, okay, the expert. We should actually sit down together and discuss with the patient, you know, to find out what is the best cost, you know, the best treatment for them. And we need to know what is the what is the timeline, you know, the cancer, how severe is the cancer, how much time do we have? You know, let's say I would discuss with Dr. Tan to say, okay, this cancer, can you give me about one month so that we can actually do this cryopreservation to preserve the eggs first? Or this thing must be done immediately. So we will discuss with the, the oncologist. That's why the oncologist is the expert in this field. Okay, right. so um, every woman every treatment is very different. A different body have different ways of uh, working towards it. Yeah, correct. Right. And of well, course, if the earlier, you know, the younger, the younger the woman, okay, the younger the woman, then the better the quality of the eggs. So meaning that if let's, let's say this lady, this, this uh, lady with uh, cancer, if she's young now, she's about 20 plus 30, and she needs treatment, of course, we freeze the eggs at that time, at that moment. Of course, the, 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 the prognosis, meaning the successful chance will be much higher. Okay, compared to someone in their 30s or in their 40s, of course, the successful chance will, be, will not be so good. Okay, so the timing also, the timing at the age also will, will, will actually determine how successful is the treatment later on. I mean, the treatment for fertility. Right, right. Okay, okay. thank you for that, Dr. Y. So uh, with that said, uh, we have uh, Dr. Tan Chi Kiang with us. Uh, we hope that we can get more information with regards to the cancer treatments and what's the best practice and all. So um, Dr. Tan Chi Kiang, um, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, so- Let me just share my slide. Can, can. So in the meantime, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Tan Chi Kiang, um, our consultant clinical oncologist at Thompson Hospital, Kota Damansara. Today, he will be sharing with us on his topic, the curable advanced cancer. So um, Dr. Tan Chi Kiang, um, okay. yeah, over to you. Sure, thank you very much. So good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Tan Chi Kiang. I'm a clinical oncologist uh, in Thompson Hospital. So firstly, uh, thank you to Dr. Y for the uh, wonderful sharing earlier uh, to give us a good head start. So I think uh, just a brief statement is that I think cancer can actually affect uh, everyone. 
And then like what Dr. White mentioned earlier, the treatment that the patients will receive will definitely be very different individually because uh, you have to take into consideration multiple factors, uh, like the patient's factors, the disease factors, and of course, uh, what the patient actually wants as well. So we will have to take into consideration all these factors before we really recommend uh, what will be the best treatment suited for that particular patient. So, uh, and then in terms of cancer and cancer treatment affecting fertilities, uh, like what Dr. Y mentioned as well, I think there are numerous cancers uh, as well as cancer treatment, which can also affect the fertility of the patients. So today I'll be sharing on two uh, particular conditions or two particular cancers where it might affect a patient's uh, fertility. So the first one that I'll be talking about will be this, uh, the curable advanced cancer. So in advanced cancer, how do we call advanced cancer or what we call stage four cancer is when a cancer has actually spread uh, outside of the origin of the area, which example, say a patient has a breast cancer, which is one of the common cancer in Malaysia. So when the cancer has actually spread outside of the breast or the surrounding limb nodes, like instant the lung or the liver or the brain or the bones, then we call the cancer incurable and it's actually stage four. So even though when a cancer is actually stage four or has been advanced cancer, even though we are not able to cure the disease, but it's still very much treatable. However, there's one particular type of cancer, which is actually the testicular germ cell tumor. And even though in advanced stage, meaning that cancer actually has spread outside from the testes, they're still highly curable. So I'll be briefly tells you more about this, this cancer, this type of cancer. So testicular germ cell tumor, okay, is actually quite an uncommon cancer and it only happens in about 1% of all cancer affecting men. And this cancer, based on like its name, is actually originated from the testes and mainly affecting young men between 15 to 30 years old. So one of the risk factors for this is that they are actually has a higher chance of getting this testicular germ cell tumor if the patient actually has undescended testes. So what it means by undescended testes, meaning that if you look at the diagram on your uh, right side, as you can see there, so during the uh, development, when someone is actually a baby, when they are born, right? So the testes actually was formed in the abdomen. And then as you grow older and when you're about to uh, become a baby and then being uh, giving birth, then actually the testes will come down and then they will actually sit in the scrotum, which is outside of our body. But for some patients, okay, or for some individuals, actually this doesn't happen all the way, all the time. Because for some of them, this testis will actually remain in the abdomen. It can be in any part of the abdomen, all right? And then they did not actually descend down to the scrotum. So because the testis has been lying inside the body and because of uh, long duration there, you know, with higher temperature and all, so that actually it has a higher chance for it to actually turn cancerous. And one of the commonest ones is actually testicular germ cell tumor. So what are the signs and symptoms and how do we actually diagnose this testicular germ cell tumor? So some design symptoms will be like, you know, painless swelling or nodules as the testes. Uh, sometimes it can be swelling in the neck. It's necessary that the symptoms have to come from the testes itself because the disease, like I said, they actually can spread. So sometimes they might spread to the limb nodes. And therefore, rather than feeling a swelling over the testes, you can actually feel that there's actually a swelling or a lump over the neck region. And they also sometimes can cause back pain, right? Particularly, they will tell you that the back pain actually will radiate coming through the front. That means that the back pain will actually move and then come back to the front. This is mainly because the cancer has actually spread to involve one of the limb nodes in the abdomen, causing this particular symptom. And of course, if the cancer has spread to the lung, then patient actually might present with prolonged cough or shortness of breath. So when we try to diagnose this cancer, we actually try to get some history. I can mention whether it's any history of undescended testes, you know, we have to perform a physical examination to see whether both the testes are around and then whether is there any swelling uh, or any hardening around the testes or any abnormalities. And like I mentioned earlier, whether patients have any lung symptoms, whether patients have any swelling in the neck, which is mainly like the neck nodes and all. And then we will perform some blood tests. We look at some of the tumor markers and then we perform some imaging like ultrasound or CT scan to confirm the diagnosis. So in terms of the management for testicular germ cell tumor, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you normally it will be depend on numerous factors. Like for patient's factor, for instance, it will be like the age, whether the patient has any underlying medical condition, 
uh, how's the patient's uh, condition then, whether patient's still fit or patients are actually very, very breathless, you know, hardly can walk. And whether, of course, the patient's preference will also be taken into consideration when we actually offer the patient treatment. In terms of the tumor factors, of course, uh, testicular germ cell tumor is actually a broad term. There are actually numerous types of the germ cell tumor, mainly the seminoma or non seminomatous But that one is something that uh, for doctors to explain to you if, let's say, a patient actually has that disease. And of course, the stage of the disease itself will also be very important in terms of what we offer the patient. So, in terms of the management, generally, some of the modalities or some of the things that we can do to treat germ cell tumors is surgery, chemotherapy, or radiotherapy, or it can be one or a combination of these uh, treatments. So just to illustrate example, right, that you can see here in the example one, that this patient actually has a swelling over the right testicular. So as you can see, there's actually a light up on the right testicle. So for this patient, because the disease has not involved other parts of the body and just confined to this testis, so a surgery might be just enough for him. That means that patient just need to perform the surgery and then he does not require any further treatment and just need to be on a long-term follow-up to observe for risk of recurrence. But whereas if you look at example two, this patient also has a germ cell tumor originating from the testis, but it's actually spread to the lung. As you can see here, there's actually a huge tumor occupying almost the whole of the left lung. And at the same time, the tumor, the cancer has also spread to involve the other limb nodes in the abdomen. As you can see from the scan here, there's a huge lesion based on the yellow color arrow. Uh, arrow. Uh, it's actually a huge parietic limb nodes, uh, which is nearby the kidney and causing the patient also have the typical back pain radiating to the front. So for this patient, uh, you will not perform a surgery for him first, but rather you actually give him chemotherapy and then subsequently you will assess him again. Depends on the response. The patient might need radiotherapy or he might need surgery or he might not need anything else. That means just the chemotherapy alone will be enough. I'll give you a more a real case scenario is that there's a 23-year-old gentleman. So he actually presented with cough and shortness of breath on exertion rather than presenting with a swelling in the testis. So investigation was done and then he was diagnosed with germ cell tumor. So as you can see from the scan here is that there's actually the cancer has actually spread to the lung, right? And so as to the uh, thorax, the chest area, which is the mediastinum area as is circled in the green. So what he actually received was that he actually received four cycles of chemotherapy and upon completion of the four cycle of chemotherapy and when you repeat back the scan, you can see that the lesions in the chest has become much, much smaller, almost non-existent. And those multiple lesions in the lung has also almost disappeared. And in fact, the tumor markers has normalized and because of the good uh, response of the lesions, so patient will actually just put on close observations and monitoring to look for risk of recurrence without requiring any further treatment. So like I mentioned earlier in the topic is that uh, testicular tumor, tumor, even though when they are advanced stage, when they have spread, they are still highly curable. So if you look at the uh, figures here, is that even when the patient actually presented with stage four uh, testicular germ cell tumor, you still have a chance as high as 80% curing the patient of the disease itself, which is considered something of a very high percentage. Uh, taking to, take it, I mean, uh, having in mind that this disease has actually spread beyond the testes and then has spread to other parts of the body, but you still get a very high percentage of chance of cure it, which is you don't see it in any other types of cancer. So of course, besides cancer affecting young male, I also would like to share one case on a cancer affecting young female. So one particular example type of cancer will be triple negative breast cancer. So it actually is one of the subtype of breast cancer. We actually have multiple subtypes in breast cancer and actually constitute about 15% of all breast cancer. And what's so special about this triple negative breast cancer is that they are commonly diagnosed in women younger than 40 years old. So these are during when they are actually fertile durations. So therefore, because this cancer will affect them during that duration itself. And this cancer actually has a higher association with a BRCA mutation, which is one of the abnormalities found in the gene causing the patient has a higher risk to develop this breast cancer. So this example here is that uh, she's a 34-year-old lady with a stage 3 breast cancer and the biopsy from that showed that she actually got a triple negative breast cancer and the disease is still confining to the breast and has not spread to the other parts of the body. So she was given chemotherapy and immunotherapy before the surgery to shrink it down as well as to give the patient a better chance of cure of the disease 
And if you can see from the diagram itself, before the chemotherapy and the immunotherapy, the tumor has been highlighted in the circle in green. So once you have completed the chemotherapy and immunotherapy, when they repeat back the imaging, you can see that the tumor has actually shrunk to almost non-existent. So subsequently, patient actually underwent surgery and then followed by some other further uh, additional treatment to help them to reduce the risk of the cancer to come back. And now she's actually in remission and just need to come back uh, regularly for follow-up. So when we talk about cancer and cancer treatment, we also need to talk about cancer survivorship, which is something that we have to uh, think about at the back of our mind. So what that means is that these are particularly when you're talking about a cancer where you actually can cure it. There's a high creative rate where, and especially it actually affects young patients because you also have to consider what's going to happen next after the cancer treatment or after the cancer is being cured. So when we actually counsel the patients, this group of patients that fall into this group, uh, when besides counseling them about the management of the cancer and the treatment side effect, one of the particular uh, topics or things that we will talk about is definitely fertility. And therefore, like what Dr. Y has mentioned earlier, so it's very important that if let's say we see this group of patients where you are able to cure them and whether they are actually young right now and in the future when the disease are cured, the cancer is cured, you know, fertility will be an issue, then you will want to actually bring them in together with the fertility specialist and together with ourselves, then we will talk about what will be the ideal plan and the management for this particular patient itself. So with that, uh, I would also like to share that uh, in Thompson Hospital, nowadays we have uh, offering oncology services. So generally we are able to perform uh, and treat most uh, solid cancers. So in terms of systemic treatment, we are able to do chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, hormonal therapy, and in terms of radiation, uh, we are able to perform 3D, IMRT, radio surgery, and SBRT. And as you can see from the picture here, that will be our new daycare as well as our new radiotherapy machine. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you so much for the wonderful sharing, Dr. Tan. I'm um, interesting to see the, adv the advancement that we have today. Okay, so um, for now, um, we have one question. Are you ready, Dr. Tan? Yeah. Okay. So, is, can fertility actually return after chemotherapy, actually? Okay. So, I think uh, when the patient actually had chemotherapy, so there are a few things which will actually affect the fertility of that particular patient. So, firstly, is that uh, at what age the patient was actually diagnosed with cancer? Because like what Dr. Y mentioned as well, the younger age group, the ovaries are actually more healthier. So the damage that it can cause by the chemotherapy will be lesser compared to someone who are, say, in their late 30s or early 40s, where they are actually almost on the verge of going to menopause soon in probably like 10 years or so. So if you were to give them chemo uh, younger age compared to those patients who are uh, a bit more higher age, like late 30s or early 40s, then of course the fertility will be very much more affected in the uh, older age group uh, female. Then you also need to take into consideration what are the chemo drugs being given because not all can chemo drugs uh, works the same. And in terms of how many cycles uh, the patient actually received. But generally, when a patient actually had uh, chemotherapy uh, in the younger age and then for curative intention, uh, what we have observed, right, especially in the studies as well, is that they do have lower fertility compared to the someone uh, who have not undergone any chemotherapy before for their age group. But there are patients who have still successfully uh, after chemotherapy to conceive naturally as well. But of course, uh, we will not be able to tell exactly what is the risk going to be involved for that particular patient. And therefore, it is actually important to discuss all this before the initiation of the treatment. If let's say the patients are very keen you know, that in the future, they would like to have a family and all. So, of course, if let's say the disease itself allowed, then we want them to actually have the necessary uh, fertility treatment prior to that, before they actually started on the chemotherapy to maximize their chances of having the family and kids as well in the future after they are cured of the cancer itself. Right, right. Okay, okay. Cool. I, I think uh, we need to have like further sessions to discuss more about um, the advanced um, cancer treatment when it comes to Definitely. fertility. Yeah. But for now, um, that's all the questions that we have uh, for, for you today. 
So um, I can see Dr. Mulhi Ilan is with us. Hi. Uh, all right. So, um, yep. So, we good? Yep, we good. So, next we have Dr. Muhilan. Thank you so much again, Dr. Tan Chikyang, for the wonderful sharing just now. You're welcome. Yeah. So, next we do have Dr. Muhilan, uh, our consultant urologist at Thompson Hospital, Kota Damasara, right now. He'll be talking about cancer on. Male cancer fertility. treatment on male fertility. All right, cool. Uh, Dr. Mahilan, without further ado, over to you. All right, so good evening. Uh, <clears throat> all of us have been listening to my two colleagues. So one of them has covered the female half and one of them has covered the overall part. So to start the day, um, welcome to Thompson. Um, on the first slide, you'll see, I just wanted to introduce my team. So the thing about fertility treatments, whether male or female, is it's a team thing. So we have a full operating team and uh, we work together as a group. So I just wanted to introduce my group. That's my staff. And uh, we've been together for pretty long. So let's move on. Now, the most important thing, and you can ask this of any guy, right? Any guy out there is our balls, right? The testis. Sadly, chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery affects our testicles. And the testicles, the balls, for all of us who are listening, uh, that includes Y and Dr. Tan, who have balls as well, <clears throat> is that it produces the hormones that control our sperm production. It controls the hormones that give us our sex drive, and it produces the sperm that you know gets us babies. So we can damage the testes in three ways. We can do surgery. We can remove it. So you do that for testicular cancers. We can give cancer, uh, chemotherapy. So chemotherapy is a form of poison that kills everything that grows very fast, that's your sperm producing cells. Or you can give radiation, which is, you know, very, very toxic and can kill everything. But there is hope, there is hope. But just as an introduction, testis does two things. It produces the key hormones to the body and it produces the sperm that, it, produce, it provides a home for the sperm to grow for about 72 days to get us babies. Next one. <clears throat> so for, as of now, you still need sperm to have babies, right? We don't have, um, we don't have, uh, how I say, we can't grow new sperm. We can't grow sperm in a test tube. You, we don't have artificial sperm. So for now, the only place you're going to get sperm is the testis. Now, worldwide, roughly out of, if you know 250 people, one of them has cancer, all right? So roughly one in 250 people have cancer. So that's put it this way, Malaysia is 30 million. So every... 300, so say 10% or 1% of that is going to have cancer. 0.1% going to have cancer. And for now, the standard of care is still surgery, chemo, and radio. And I was talking to Dr. Tan just before we started, and he mentioned that we now have immunotherapy and targeted therapy. Thankfully, those two are not as toxic as standard treatments, so we have hope. And But as of now, the three standard so, uh, care of surgery, surgery, chemo, and radio all affect the testis, either by removing it, by killing the cells that produce the sperm, or by killing the sperm themselves, or by damaging the sperms. Okay, so again, just to repeat. So Dr. Tan discussed uh, surgical testicular cancer, so I do these surgeries. Sadly, I do one every couple of weeks. The outcomes are good. The outcomes are good. Patients do very well, but then you only have one testis. Good news, we only need one good testis to have good sexual function and to produce sperm. But after the surgery, a lot of patients go for chemotherapy. So, And the chemotherapy is what damages the factories that produce sperm, and they damage healthy sperm. So you know, if you used a sperm just after chemotherapy to get pregnant, you probably will have abnormal babies, okay? Now, if you have one healthy testis, your hormone levels are still good. But if you get something very toxic, if you give radiation to both testes, or you remove one testis and give radiation to the other, or you give very, very toxic chemo, which multi-cycle, very long chemo sessions, hormone production will drop. And that's going to affect your sex life, and the hormones are also going to affect sperm production. So what does chemotherapy we are not talking about radio, we're not talking about surgery. 
chemo is the one that is going to affect the shape of the sperm. So when we first give chemo, a lot of patients thankfully may need only one cycle of chemo and now it's been proven one cycle of chemo is not going to do much. Okay, patients are going to be very healthy. You're going to be very healthy. You still can have babies. Uh, let's say you have five, six cycles of chemo. One, the total amount of sperm you produce is going to be less. And the sperm that you will produce will be lower quality. You know, there'll be abnormal shape. The head will be different. The tail will be different. They may have two heads, two tails. Basically, very weird sperm. Or they may look healthy, but they don't move. You know, they like, instead of being able to run 100 meters, they like crawl 100 meters or they get belly grab, little bit twitch, twitch and move. The problem is the DNA inside the sperm tends to be damaged as well. So what you'll have is very abnormal sperm. And this will take time to recover. This will take one or two years to recover. So that's the effect of chemo. You will have abnormal sperm or you will have very, very low numbers. Now there's a small group of people a very small group of people who sadly, even after sometimes a short cycle of chemo, they become permanently infertile. And who are these people? These are usually older guys. I'm 50, so guys like me, all right? Uh, the babies like Dr. Y, who is really, really young, probably will be have good sperm even after chemo. But the older guys, yes, our chemo, chemo is really going to affect our sperm counts, right? I'm not sure about Dr. Tan's age, so I couldn't mention that. Radiation. So radiation for testes. Okay, radiation has come a long way. So usually it's very, very targeted. So if they're if you're giving, if Dr. Tan gives you radiation, it's probably going to be to say breast is breast, uh, ovaries, ovaries, it's not going to, oh sorry, ovaries is women. If say he gives it to the prostate, he's not going to hit the testes. So the only way radiation affects the testes is if he gives radiation to the testes, which is not common. But if he does give radiation testes, like say lymphoma or something, I think lymphoma is also chemo. If he gives radiation to testes, the damage is usually within 60 to 90 days. Maximum damage is four to six months and it's the worst. It will literally, is like you've just fried an egg. Okay, everything inside is gone. Recovery is very difficult from radiation. But thankfully, radiation or testes is pretty rare. Most of the time, if it's a cancer, we remove it. There is a situation where if you're unlucky, you get a second cancer on the same side, you want to preserve it, you can try radio, but very rare. All right, let's move on. Oops, sorry. What's your options? Uh, as of now, we have no way to grow new sperm outside your body, number one. There is no way to do it. Uh, we have donor sperm. You can use donor sperm, that means, but the DNA will not be yours. Even and. You know, everybody wants to have used this. So you can use donor sperm. You can adopt a baby. But if you want to have a baby with your sperm, your best option is to collect and freeze the sperm. Now, if you are diagnosed with cancer, you do not have to do surgery and chemotherapy and radiotherapy the next day. Okay, we will talk to you. We will discuss it. And we will give you a few days or a few weeks to think it through. So you have time. So during that period while you're waiting, what we do is we ask you to ejaculate, masturbation. All guys know how to do it. Do it in a lab. You do it with us. Do it in a fertility center. We can preserve your sperm for 99 years. It's not going to go anywhere. And it will be healthy, right? So you ejaculate, give us a good sample. We will divide that sample into small, small, small tubes. And we require only one tube to help Dr. Y do IVF. So if you give us one sample, we can do three, four cycles of IVF. That's a lot of babies, okay? But you want to be really careful, give us many samples. So we can keep those samples and the cost is not very high, it's pretty cheap. We can keep it indefinitely. This solves your problem of worrying about having your own baby. And we're going to do multiple samples. Minimum is 48 hours. We are not Superman. It takes time to get new sperm. All right. Let's say you come and see me or Dr. Y sends you or Dr. Tan sends you and says, this patient is going for chemo, but he masturbated, produced the sperm sample, and there is no sperm. It's azospermic. What do we do? Not difficult. Uh, we can offer you surgery. One option. We offer, We do a minor surgery. We can do it under local. We collect your sperm and we freeze it. 
all right and same the sperm will last for 99 years and at the end of it or if you get married later we pass you to dr y and his team and they can do ivf for you right what happens if you are not mature that means your it is really really messed up and it's really really unfortunate but children do get cancer and they do have to go for chemo so what happens if you haven't hit puberty but you're going to go for therapy or your son is going for treatment what can you do thankfully children do really well all right so most children we give chemo they do really really well 15 16 years old they are able to have children and even if their sperm counts are zero i have done micro tc for these patients and they do pretty well we can get sperm but as a precaution what would you do i would collect a little bit of the testicular tissue same something like what dr white talked about for ovarian and we keep it we freeze it and then when he is completed his chemo and is a bit older we put it back in okay it's not very successful that's the downside we can try but it's not very successful however if most of the time like i said when they are mature they get married they want to have kids we do micro tc for them they do pretty well so overall the short version the best best option is to collect and sew sperm beforehand we collect the semen if you're married fertilize the eggs and preserve the embryos number 2 failing all that we try to preserve testicular tissue and if you fail all of that two or two years after your chemo if we don't have sperm we'll try doing micro tc for you right and we'll do our best to get you a baby by the way the picture on the side that is not how sperm are frozen in real life okay now that, that was just for illustration so please don't think that that is how we keep sperm in real life all right so some short questions that people often ask me when to try after chemo 2 years 2 years is a good number to try what is the risk to baby after chemo that means of having an abnormal baby one cycle chemo almost zero almost zero um after 2 years the risk falls again it may be a bit more difficult because the sperm are not a lot or very little but the baby itself usually tends to be healthy what about my sex life after chemo everybody ask me that no problem can have sex and usually most people have no effect on their sex life the hormones the hormones still function enough and if you can't have a normal sex life because of low hormones it's not difficult to fix it's very easy to fix we have medication for it uh i said freeze the sperm right so a lot of doctors ask me or even the gynecologist ask me or other people ask me if i use frozen sperm to do an ivf cycle does the fertility rates change a lot it comes down to the condition of the sperm if you have good sperm no that means if you compare a good frozen sperm to a good healthy sperm usually not much it's almost the same uh if you have poor sperm then of course the numbers are lower if your wife is older if the eggs are poor quality numbers are lower but if you compare apple to apple it's almost the same um next question people ask me you know like sunny when they hear my talks they call me like do you have this in thompson yes we have it in thompson um uh, it's very easy to do any of us can arrange it for you all right so if you're going through chemo if you're going through radio or you're going through surgery for cancer we can do a lot for you we can help you have a baby in the future you just need to see us before you start treatment and it will go a lot easier but we will do our best to get you a baby so i'm trying to keep that short hopefully that helped and i just want to wish you all a good night if you all have any questions now's a good time to ask thank you right cool sharing um dr mohilan uh thanks for the weary really insights uh shared with us uh this evening appreciate that so um we got kind of like a question with us right okay but based on the sharing of your like, okay to start like you shared like uh, the effects of chemotherapy on sperm but the faq also say like in 2 years is ideal to start again naturally to to try and conceive right so the yeah the question is pretty much like uh, could cancer treatment be simplified to be the factor of infertility something like that so right now i mean you mean okay there's cancer tr treatment is a cause of infertility right definitely yeah. um but you want to simplify it further i think i have asked dr tan 
he's the man. Right. Dr. Tan is the man for chemo and radio, right? So I if I said I'm doing it, Dr. Tan will come and kill me right now. So Dr. Tan, can we simplify chemo any further? Uh, actually, uh, not really in a way. Uh, generally, what we offer the patient is based on the patient's condition as well as the disease, uh, like the stage and the types of cancer. So generally, uh, I think it's difficult for you to give, in a way, a more simplified version kind of treatment uh, because it will become ineffective. And then when there's a higher chance of uh, recurrence, that will be even something which you do not want to happen. Uh, but of course, when you talk about in certain scenario or in certain cases, there are actually different types of uh, chemotherapy regimen that you can choose from. So some will probably be slightly shorter by say maybe two cycles. So you might have four rather than six kind of thing, but that will be very much depending on the type of cancer as well as the stage. But generally, uh, we are not able to simplify like say, like radiation, you need probably like 30 times, then can we cut down to 10? No, you can't. So it all depends on the whole cancer itself as well. Yeah, the type of cancer, the stage, and uh, other factors as well the same time. Okay. All right. All right, doctors. Um, it's been a great sharing tonight. All right. So, so far, that's all the questions that we have. Let me take one last look in our Facebook Live pool. Yep. So basically, that's about it. Thank you so much for the wonderful sharing. Um, okay. do, Thank you. Do Dr. Y and or Dr. Tan or Dr. Muhilan like? Do you have any last any last uh, take 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 away message for tonight? Right. So yeah, just one. So like I said, if, you know, by the grace of God, you know, bad luck, kena cancer or the kena cancer or the paksa melalui chemo, you have to go through chemo or radio. There is a little bit ada masa dia sikit yang sebelum you start chemo buat operation that is your golden period for you to collect your telur collect the sperm collect the tissue buat lah apa apa yang perlu buat okay so use that time well come see us and uh, before you start the chemo janganlah datang selepas start chemo kalau boleh alright so good night for female, for female cancer, it's a bit different because if you want to collect the eggs, it will take a bit of time, you see. Because for the eggs, uh, like stimulation and collection is actually take at least, uh, huh? I will say, at least three to four weeks' time. You know, Sometimes if the egg collection is not enough, we might counsel them to have like second collection. So it will take another like three to four weeks' time. So, so sometimes it's, uh, for, for a woman, it is not so straightforward. So because of this time, you know, the time frame, so most likely we'll discuss with like Dr. Tan, you know, the oncologist first, see how much time we have. You know, for, for, for guys, easy because, you know, taking the sperm is just through, you know, masturbation and then you say 48 hours apart. So yeah. easily within one week can take two samples. But unfortunately for women, even for one cycle, maybe if we are lucky, we can get about like 10 to 20 eggs. If you are not lucky, we might only get five to six eggs, you know. So maybe we have to go through multiple times then. You know, so 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 I think we don't delay them. Yeah, so the time is precious, the time is important. So so we might discuss with them, you know, after 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 they decided to to to, to freeze the egg or freeze the, the, the embryos. All right. Yeah. So, that, uh, yeah, I completely agree with uh Dr. Mohilan as well as Dr. Y as well. So I think uh, ultimately uh, what I wanted to stress on is that I think every patient's uh, condition will be different. The disease will be different, the stage will be different. Uh, so I think everyone is unique. So I think in terms of the treatment, we will not be able to have like one size fit all kind of uh, treatment for all the patients. So generally, I think it's good to discuss with your treating doctors. And then we will discuss with other specialists who are involved to uh, recommend what will be the best uh, treatment options for the particular patient's condition. Yeah. Right, right, right. All right, doctors, it's been a great sharing again. Thank you so much for your time for tonight. So uh, if anything, we'll be in touch. And um, other than that, cheers to the weekend. Yep, thank you very much. Have a good and evening. Thank you. Happy weekend, everyone. All thank right. You. Good night. Bye-bye.